Okay, I didn't realize my phone was almost full, so that's why there's a, kind of an abrupt stop there. It also chopped my previous video, which I thought was one ongoing video, into two smaller videos for some reason. I don't know why. I, I, I don't normally do the long videos like this, and uh, it definitely has gone longer than I anticipated, but that's why I kind of chopped it up, and I'm going to just put it up in three parts. And of course, when I get going about something that, that I kind of get worked up over or passionate about, I, I can uh, just kind of keep going for a while. So, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of where this end video ended up almost being, or this review almost ended up being as long as the movie. Um, but okay, we're, I was talking about the sign language scene, and it was a good scene, and I really appreciated that scene, and, and it really raised my hopes for the movie, which, of course, later were dashed repeatedly time and time again. Um, but I really like that they went out of their way to show Kong's level of intelligence. Because it was pretty clear early on that, that Godzilla, in just sheer ferocity and, capa and, and, and uh, uh, capability of, of, of inflicting damage, is just far greater than Godzilla or uh, Kong. But Kong can absolutely uh, outthink Godzilla. And in that first fight scene where, there, where he's still on the, the carrier, or he's, he's in the flotilla, um, you know, he, he watches Godzilla's uh, uh, fin at the top of the water, and he looks over at the, sh the, the ships that are lined up, and he goes, okay, he's going to end up over here, so I'm going to meet jump from ship to ship and meet him. I'm like, ah, they're showing how Kong can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Godzilla because he can th outthink Godzilla. He can, he can use the environment to his advantage, even though... Uh, you know, uh, immediate, you know, just physically, Godzilla has all the advantages. Um, and then even in the uh, the later fight, the um, the 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 fight, the the final fight, you know, at one point, uh, Kong kind of realizes he goes in close and he grabs Godzilla's head because Godzilla is trying to hit him with that atomic blast, but he's he knows he needs to stay in close. He can't put himself in a position where, you know, Godzilla can get a clear shot at him. And then when they disengage and Godzilla is at a point where he can get a clear shot at him, Kong just keeps running in circles because he knows, he knows, I, I got I to gotta close this distance here and I got to keep moving because I can't risk getting hit by that thing. And when he does get hit by that thing, you saw how devastating it could be. <clears throat> And Kong knew that. He's far more intelligent than, than you anticipated. And I, like I said, he grew as a character um, that, you know, throughout the movie. He grew more than any other character. Um, so I enjoyed watching that. Um, that was a good, that was good writing on, on the part of the writers. Uh, if only we would see more of that. Um, and then th there was that, that final scene where they defeat Mechagodzilla and Kong is standing there with the axe in his hand and Godzilla's staring him down and you're like, uh-oh, will they or won't they? What's going to happen here? Um, a, kind of a very tense scene, but I like this scene too. Um, now, of course, what happens is Kong deliberately throws down the axe and just stands there. And Godzilla accepts whatever's going on and goes into the ocean. Now, I think this scene could be interpreted a couple different ways. And uh, the most obvious way is some people said, because Godzilla wasn't looking to kill Kong. He wanted him to, to dominate him because I'm, Godzilla was, I'm the alpha. I'm the alpha titan. Okay, you cannot challenge me for that title. And I need to make sure you need to know you cannot challenge me for that title. That's what Kong was about. And that goes, goes to one other thing that I did, did really enjoy about the movie, or appreciated and respected, is... Gong, Kong, yeah, Kong versus Godzilla. There was a clear winner. And I did not expect that level of commitment from the writers. I thought it was going to be a very ambiguous kind of ending. And then Mecha Godzilla would interrupt and they would team up and then they would give each other a hug on the back. And no, there was a clear winner. Godzilla won. He won. And Kong had no choice but to acquiesce at that point. You know, but Godzilla didn't want to kill him. He's like, no, you, you will bow to me, basically. Now, obviously, there was a, another chance for Kong to renew that fight um, and possibly even come out on top because Godzilla wasn't in tip-top shape either. Um, 
But I think when now some people have interpreted the way uh, Kong threw the through the uh, axe down that he was effectively bending the knee and bowing to Godzilla and says, "All right, you're in charge." That's not actually how I interpreted that scene. I interpreted it as Kong actually almost maturing past this need to be an alpha. And in some ways he was saying, I'm not going to bow to you, but I don't care that you're the alpha. Because you're not what matters to me. What matters to me are the people that I fought to protect. And that's why I fought Mechagodzilla. It wasn't so much to save you, it was to protect the people behind me. And that was my motivation. And that's how I interpreted that scene. As, as he throws the axe down, he says, I'm not going to fight you because I know I don't need to fight you. I don't have that drive like you have to be top dog. Because if I try to fight you and I lose, the people behind me, his lives are at risk. So I'm going to choose not to fight you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of take the, the, the high road because I know not fighting you will give me a chance to protect the people I love. Maybe I'm reading more into it than, than, than was there. Um, uh, do I think that the, the writers necessarily had that kind of depth to it? Probably not. And, and maybe, maybe I'm, I'm kind of pushing kind of my own interpretation onto it, which really doesn't hold weight. Uh, and, and maybe if you, if you hear the writers talk about it, they'll give this, uh, yeah, he was kind of bending the knee. And that was that. I mean, which would be disappointing to me because I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good scene, and I liked that it could be interpreted in, uh, different ways. Uh, I, I respect that in a movie, that um, it, it can cover a lot. Of, it's like a good, uh, good Robert Heinlein book. He's going to cover ten different, twelve different topics in a single novel, but he's not necessarily going to tell you how he feels about that topic, and he's going to let you come to your own conclusion. He's just going to present you with a scenario of what life may be like in the future and how you know, and you can kind of come to your own conclusion about how you feel about that. He's not going to say, I think it's a good way of life or I don't think it's a good way. Sometimes he does, but he's simply saying, uh, here's an, here's, here's, here's an idea to think about. Would you enjoy living in that kind of society that springs up in a, in a kind of few, in a science fiction kind of future? Um, and I, but I, I like that that scene could be interpreted different ways, and, and that's how I interpreted it. So, um, so those were the good points of the movie. Yeah, there's, what, four? As opposed to two pages of annoyances and, and, and slap in my forehead. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't like to... I'm actually, as critical as I can be, it, it isn't because I like to tear things down. I prefer to build things up. But when the Emperor is not wearing any clothes, I feel an obligation to say he's not wearing any clothes. And unfortunately, in this case, this was not a good movie. And I've, I've heard other reviewers rate it, who, whose opinions I really respect, um, and who criticized it in a lot of the same ways I did. Um... Uh, gave it like a seven out of ten uh, for one for one reviewer. I'm like, really? Did you watch the same movie? You gave it all those criticisms, and you're still going to give it a seven out of ten. I would give it at most a three. That's how I felt about this movie. A three. Um, now that isn't. Now I, I, I'm not trying to bully anybody and say, oh, you're an idiot. I was just a little shocked that, that he still rated it so high uh, because. Now, some of the some of the, the sins in writing in this movie, and God, he God, he went on about how bad the writing was, and boy, he was right. Uh, uh, some of the sins were unforgivable. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect movie, and there's no such thing as a perfect writer uh, in any way, shape, or form. But I do expect more than what I got out of this movie. This was a a triple A, a AAA high budget blockbuster, uh, and man, we've just had some major duds. Uh, for a long time now, and I remember the renaissance and uh, of good sci-fi writing and superhero movie writing, which came with the start of the uh, the original X-Men movies, and that was kind of a a real enlightening moment where you kind of went, "Wow, this is a great movie. It's well written. It makes sense. It's relatable. 
Um, and, and even though it's got a comic base to it, you can, you can take those characters and put it, put them into a modern world without all this comic book stuff and still believe that it could be possible to have this type of scenario develop. And after that, we had a slew of great movies and great science fiction movies. And then it all just ended. And then we get things like Avatar. Not The Last Airbender. That, that, I'm talking about that blue movie. Uh, and that was, that was another one that I could review for hours and just tear into it. Now, that one was legitimately offensive on multiple levels um, in, in, the, in the story itself. But that's a whole other thing. But my point being... You know, I don't... Uh, the Emperor's not wearing any clothes. And I don't feel bad saying that. And I'm not trying to tear anybody down. It's not like these guys are going to watch my review. But I think all my points are valid and worth putting out there. And I, I do think, unfortunately, this movie... And, you know, I personally have had to... Done things in my uh, career uh, where it's like I wasn't proud of. I was, I was lazy. I wrote bad. I wrote a bad, bad report. I needed to be called out on it. So I ended up in my sergeant's office and and you know he's like oh you, this i expect better from you and you know what i'm glad he did and you know while i don't put myself on his level i it's still it's still really rankling that to, to watch something like this and, and be so disappointed and, and you know how did this get past people how did somebody sign off on this there there this movie is just so bad on so many levels and um i don't and honestly i don't care how much money it makes and you can, you know, yeah, well, the movie's judged on how... You're really the CEOs and the, the corporate guys judge a movie on how much money you make. Oh, okay, that, that's a legitimate art. They can write whatever they want. But if it's steaming, I'm going to call it steaming, okay? Um, so, uh, while I'm very negative and critical in this, in, in kind of a review of this movie, um, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is deserved. I mean... Really, I was I was disappointed and insulted by some aspects of this movie. So, but moving forward, I hope that there are now there are plenty of series and movies I've watched recently that are just absolutely fantastic, and I I would love to review them because I I want uh, Color Out of Space by Nicolas Cage, one of the best H.P. Lovecraft adaptions to film ever, uh, if not the best. Uh, that's debatable because there there are a couple good ones. Um, but, but yeah, there's a movie I might review because I want you to watch it and I want to go on about how, about everything they did right. So hopefully that's something positive to look forward to. And I don't, I don't want to just review a movie because I hated it and was angry at it. Now I was obviously angry at this movie, but I'll stop ranting now and I'm going to sign off. And this is the first experiment of a, of a movie, movie review. Uh, God, it's kind of like an hour and a half. I apologize. But yeah, this is Wintermute signing off and, and hopefully this hopefully this somebody somewhere enjoys this, even if it's just one person.